Now we're going to be focusing on chapter 1, lesson 10, numerical expressions, where we are to write an expression to match the words in order to write and interpret numerical expressions. And if you notice with these, um, there's no really equal signs and we're not really solving an equation. So we're not solving for x, we're just writing the expression out. But in order to get full credit on your homework quizzes and tests, you will need to do picture boxes. So just having the answer is not simply enough. Um, you can do it either in the book if you feel there's no space, or you can use a separate piece of paper, such as your math journal. Just make sure to show it for, uh, for full credit. Ethan, which is a name, Ethan collected 16 seashells. He lost four of them while walking home. So there's this boy, um, usually Ethan's a boy name, but you know, it, oh yeah, and there's a he, so the pronoun. So he collected 16 seashells and he lost four of them while walking home. So you have to think to yourself, is there a total? Is there a certain amount that he had total? And if so, is it the 16 seashells? Is it the four? Or you don't know. Well, if he has 16 seashells and he loses four, meaning he takes away four of them, you did start with a total. At the beginning, before going home, he had 16 seashells total, you know, before leaving. And what happened was he lost four of them. That doesn't mean he needs four boxes. That means that this is the amount he lost. So these are the seashells he lost. And there's four seashells. Here is your X. And this is the seashells left, um, he brought home. And you can see that if he had 16 to begin with and he lost four, he's taking them away. And you can see that it's getting smaller. Here's the 16 total and there's the four being removed to get the final answer. And so for your equation it is exactly what they said. It's 16 minus four. To get full credit, you do need to label everything. You have to show that there are 16 seashells total um, collected and be even more specific. He lost four seashells, and these are the seashells he brought home, which is what we don't know. Here we could stop at 16 minus four. Um, this is the actual answer. If for kicks and giggles, you do want to solve it, you could do 16 minus four and find out that equals 12. And you could find out that there's 12 seashells he brought home. But in terms of what you'd plug in, um, let's say onto Illuminate or um, any other site that we'll be using to test, you would type in 16 minus 4. If you type in 12, it's not the exact equation because you're not following the directions. You need to write an expression, and this right here is the expression. Although I would be proud if you found that's 12 seashells you brought home. So let's do one more, um, and then you can do numbers 3 and 4 on your own. Yes, mean brought four bracelets. Each bracelet cost $3. So here, you're thinking, okay, she bought four bracelets, and each bracelet cost $3. So how is that going to look like? Do you know a total amount? Well, you do know that there's a total of four bracelets, but is that really what goes on top? Or are you saying that here's one bracelet, and it costs a certain amount of money? Here's a second bracelet, and it costs a certain amount of money. Here's a third bracelet, and it costs a certain amount of money. And here's the fourth bracelet. So you can see here, yeah, you can argue that there are four bracelets total, but that doesn't really help you if you put that on top. What really helps you if you put it on top is how much these four bracelets that you got total cost. So on the top, the X is, what you don't know, is the total cost of four bracelets. Now you know that the first bracelet cost $3. And you know that because it says each bracelet costs $3. So if that's the first bracelet is $3, the next would be the same, the next would be the same, and the next would again be the same. So for the expression here, Yasmin bought four bracelets, one, two, three, four. There's four boxes. And each one is $3, $3, $3, $3. This is the first, second, third, and fourth. Here, 
the total would be the total cost of all four bracelets. And then you can do three plus three plus three plus three. But since it is the same number being repeated because you're buying the same amount each time and you're spending it, you could say three times four. Alternatively, you could say four times three. The difference between these two is that one is saying that you each, this one would be the better answer because you're saying that there's four bracelets each costing three dollars. This one is more saying you spent three dollars for four bracelets, three dollars each for four bracelets. Um, you know, more than likely you'd be using this one. Again, it's the same answer. Um, you end up with the same product, the same answer because of the community property, but because of the wording of this, this one might be a little bit better to use. Um, either way, you do need to show this picture for full credit, and without it, I wouldn't accept either of them. So go ahead and try doing numbers three and four in a similar process where you have a picture and you draw an equation out. Keep in mind for subtraction and division, you can't simply switch the numbers um, because the commutative property only works for addition and multiplication. Now for number five, it gets a little tricky. Write words to match the expression. This time, instead of then telling you a story where you need to find an answer, you need to tell a story. So you need to think to yourself. The first thing you need to do is do something where you're multiplying four and 12. Why would you multiply? So what they're saying here is you have four times 12. So if you're looking at four times 12, you're either repeating four 12 times, where you're saying um, four, so this is like box one, box two has four, and you have 12 boxes of something, and then you're repeating it four times. Um, what, is, what box, why would you have 12 boxes, and what would be inside of the 12 boxes? Would that be a price? Would that be a certain amount? And once you decide what you want your total to be and what you want these to represent, then you can create an, um, a sentence with it. For example, I could say that I have 12 boxes of candy. Inside each candy, there are four pieces. There are four pieces. There are four pieces. So I bought 12. I don't know why it's so dark. Sorry, hold on a sec. Keep that slide dinging up. So you could say I bought 12, Miss Tolentino bought 12 boxes of candy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Inside each candy there were four pieces. Um, how many total pieces of candy are there so far? So this is the total pieces of candy. in 12 boxes. Then afterwards, you'd have to say, why would you add three? And then my brother gave me three more pieces of candy. So that's one thing you can do. The other way you could look at this equation is that you have four boxes of something and 12 inside of it. But either way, this is where you get the freedom to say, hey, I'm gonna create a story so that this makes sense. So you can say, Miss um, Tolentino has four pieces of candy in each box. She has twelve boxes. So that deals with the four times 12. And then don't forget, you have three more. So her brother gives three extra pieces of candy. And then you could ask, how much candy does she have all together? Does she have total?
This could be any kind of thing as long as it makes sense. Now, after you're done with this, you could say uh, plus three. Don't forget the plus three. And this is just three extra pieces for my brother. And so, you know, just make sure to put that in there. In order to get full credit, I do want to see the picture box for whatever kind of story you make up. This could have been a story about um, Miss Tolentino reads for four days and each day she reads 12 pages. Um, on the last day she read an extra three pages. How many pages did she read altogether? Just as long as either you're repeating the four or you're repeating the 12 and there's a reason you add three to something. Um, it could have been any, uh, uh, like this one is where you can use your imagination as long as when you draw the picture box, it makes sense. So you have to decide when would you do 36 divided by four? Uh, when would you do 24 minus six plus three where you do six plus three first and then you subtract it from 24. So you're gonna add two numbers first and then you're gonna subtract it from a total. If you need help, look through some of the problems we've done in the past um, and see, hey, they added those numbers for what reason? They divided for what reason? And maybe you can do a, a similar type of question. Just make sure you draw a picture box. So you create your sentence and you draw a picture box. I find it helps to draw the picture box first, as you saw as I was doing the tutorial. I did the picture box first and then I created my sentence. Um, again, it could have been another, another type of question. It could have been, Miss Tolentino read for four days. This is day one. Day two, day three, day four. So that's why I have four. And each day she read 12 pages. 12 pages, 12 pages, 12 pages, 12 pages. How many pages did she read all together? And then that that plus three, and then on the you know, and then on the fifth day she read just three pages. How many pages did she read, you know, during the, all five days? Or something like that. Um, there's a lot of ways you could attack these problems. Just make sure that they make sense and make sure you're um, creating your picture boxes along the way. Number eight is a little bit of fun, a little eight through 10, because you could see that the numbers are repeating. There's a three, two, 30, 33, two, three, three, 33, two. So you could see there are these three numbers and in all these equations, they have 33, two, 33, two, three, twice a day, which is like saying two, and 30. So what you're gonna do is draw a line to match an expression with a word. So you're gonna match these up with which one you think it is. Um, this is where it gets exciting. So draw a picture box out for number eight, the way that we've been doing, and say, hey, is that equation three times two times by 30? Is it 30 divided by three minus two? Is it three plus two subtracted from 30? So which one is it? Um, have fun with this one. Um, it's a lot more fun than you might think at first because it, it allows you to think. It allows you to draw the picture box and see, hey, just because you have the same numbers, 30, three, two, 30, three, two, three, two, 30, doesn't mean um, anything. It doesn't mean you just add, then you subtract, or you s divide and then subtract. You have to actually think and that's, that's where it gets exciting. All right. <sighs> I'm gonna go on to number 11 now. All right, because I'm giving a little sample of all these different types of problems. Number 11 and 12 is gonna be very similar to what we were doing yesterday in terms of um, using picture boxes. But again, read the directions. It says write an expression to match the words. So the answer that they're looking for has to look like an equation without the equal sign. If you solve the answer, that's not what they're looking for in this particular problem, so the answer will be wrong. You did all that work, but at the end of the day, you won't get full credit because you didn't read the directions. So attend to precision, make sure you're reading the directions. All right, let's read them. Kylie has 14 polished stones. Her friend gives her six more stones write an expression to match the words. So here they don't want to know how many stones does she have all together or how many stones does she have left or um, how many stones blah blah blah. They just want to know an equation, um, an expression I should say. So 
Kylie has 14 polished stones. Her friend gives her six more stones. So first, she started with a certain amount of stones, and then she got even more stones. So now, how many stones does she have all together? So X is the total stone she has. Kylie at first had 14 stones. Afterwards, she got six stones. So this is from her friend. So I'll put F. So these are Kylie stones. These are her friend stones. And these now all belong to Kylie. So total stones Kylie now owns. And what would you do to this? If you have 14 stones and you add six more to your collection, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna add six more. And because they're not the same number, 14 and six, you can't multiply and say 14 times two or six times two. So you'll just say 14 plus six. And right there and then is your expression. And that's all they're actually looking for. If you solve it, you could do that for fun, but keep in mind what you'd be typing into Illuminate should be 14 plus six. Um, as fun as this will be, I'm going to let you try to do this expression. Keep in mind that there's quite a few steps going here. Maybe I'll do this one again. This one's so exciting. Rashad has 25 stamps. So right now we have 25 stamps. He shared them equally among himself and four friends. Then Rashad found two more stamps in his pocket. Write an expression to match the words. Kind of cool. I like this one. Let's do this one. So Rashad has 25 stamps total. He shared them equally among himself and four friends. So Rashad has 25 stamps to start. What he does with those 25 stamps is that he shares them equally. So let's draw a box for every person he shares with. He shares it among himself. So don't forget him. So we'll put H for himself, or you could put R for Rashad. Then he shared it with four friends. One friend, two friends, three friends, four friends. Let's count how many people are actually in here. One, two, three, four, five. So he has 25 stamps and he's sharing it with five people even though the number five isn't here. So keep in mind he's sharing them equally. So however much he gets, his friend gets the same amount. The friend gets the same amount. The friend gets the same amount. The friend gets the same amount. X is how much each of them gets. So this is the amount of stamps each person gets. Now keep in mind, we're doing 25 divided by the five people because we're getting smaller. We have a total and we're sharing it and it's getting smaller. So it's division because it's repeating by five people. Rashad has 25 stamps and he shares it equally amongst himself and four friends, which means not divided by four, but five because there's five of them. Then Rashad found two more stamps in his pocket. So after all this happens, we're gonna do that first, because that's what he did first. Then he found two more stamps in his pocket. What happens if you find two more? Are you gonna add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Uh, that's a weird division. If you find two more stamps, you're not getting smaller. So we're not subtracting, we're not getting less, and we're not dividing. Are we adding or are we multiplying? If you find two more stamps, it's just two, nothing else is repeating. It's not like you found two and two and two and two. So you're gonna add two. And so you have the 25 divided by five from this equation right here, plus two because he found two more. So your final answer is 25 divided by five plus two that he found. All right, have fun with this. Take your time, um, especially when it comes to these ones. Make sure your your sentences make sense by drawing it out and uh, labeling your picture boxes. All right, ask questions tomorrow.